Getting stock rates, current and historic, has always been a request by a lot of people in Excel. And now you can do it. You've been able to get the current ones, stock rates or currency exchanges for a while, but very, very recently they added this function called stock history. And stock history can get it for any historical date. We're gonna go through that in this video. So if you like this content, and in general, if you like my channel, then give me a like button on this video. And also subscribe if you want way more videos on Excel, Power BI, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams, loads of other applications. So here we are in Excel, and I'm going to show you how to create this. So here I have a drop-down list where I can choose the base currency like Euro, and then it will convert it to all of these other currencies based on the date here. I can change the date to absolutely anything I want, 13 of March 2015, and it will just give me all of those. Um, I also have by interval, so let me collapse that and expand using the grouping feature. And then over here I have um, all the historic stuff where I can specify the start end date, even the year end date, and get an by interval of daily, weekly, monthly, or even annual here. So here I can enter either a currency pair or a stock exchange. So currency pairs must be entered like this, three letters for each. So I can enter EUR, THB, Thai baht, and Euro. And then I can have it weekly, uh, the start date that I want, so 2017, and the end date. I can even put equals today, open close brackets, and then it will expand every day to give me the most up-to-date rate. So here is the change and the percentage, just up, down arrows, and then how much it's changed. And then here is the year. I can also specify a year-end date. To do that, I'll first change it back to daily. And the year-end, this is very common for accounting purposes, where you have a different year-end and you wanna see the by year output. So over here, I am going to say, for example, 31st of March, and then in order to refresh this one, I need to go to the data tab and choose refresh all. And then it will refresh it over here. Um, so I also have this part here. And this is looking at the currency of a specific day. So the base currency, you can choose from the drop down list. Uh, let's say GBP. And then choose the date that you want. So 31st of Jan 2018. And then it will give you these. Sometimes it gives you a blank if it doesn't find it at that rate. Um, notice that it doesn't give you the results for every day. So it goes in February 1, 2, 3, and then 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13. So it jumps the weekends effectively and any holidays where it doesn't have those rates. Um, so let me show you how to do this. So there are a couple of ways that you can get historical currencies in Excel. Before I show you how to do that though, I will say that if you just want the spreadsheet, then you can subscribe to my channel, write a comment down below this video, and then I can send you this spreadsheet. Also note that I have an equivalent in Google Sheets, which is more sophisticated. It can return these trend lines, seven, 30 day, and 365 day. Plus it's also easier to search. It uses the Google Finance function like this. And we also have average historic exchange rates in the same way as before but it will give us um, same kind of symbols where we can see it by year, by month, or by day. And then here's a trend between two start and end dates. So if you want either of those, then uh, leave a comment down below and subscribe to my channel. I have another video about the Google Sheets one that I'll link to as well here. So let me start with a new sheet. Now, what we've had for a while in Excel is the ability to, on the data tab, choose stocks. So I could say, for example, Apple, Google, and Microsoft, and then I can go here and the data tab, I can choose stocks. And this will find the stock price. We'll find all the details relevant to that company, like this. Pretty cool, including even some information about how many people work there, shares outstanding, description, employees, etc. And if I want to extract anything to the grid, I can select them and choose this. And let's say I want the price, I can expand that. I can expand the 52 week high and low and things like that here. So this has been around for a couple of years. 
with Office 365. These data types are really, really cool and they are keep they keep getting better. So you also have geography that's been around for a while as well, but they're just introducing ways to get them from your entire organization or even from Wolfram Alpha data types that can do virtually anything. <laughs> so that's not available for general consumption yet, but it is pretty exciting once it comes in. You can get movie names, fictional characters, music, cities, um, astronomy, periodic table, um, food, and virtually anything like that as well. But back to the stock stuff. So we've been able to do this for a while. Now, if you don't get the one that you want, what you can do is you can change it. So you can right click on a card and you can choose data type and you can press refresh, change or convert to text. So change, maybe you have an Apple and multiple stock exchanges, you could choose that one there. Um, if we go for a pretty generic one like uh, Handy, it's not sure what to do with that. So it might give you this. Um, and sometimes it will, if it will find two, it'll give you two options over here. So we could do that for city, for example, if I do Springfield and then go to geography. So I'm entirely sure what to do. So it gives me a lot of options here. Um, and then you can choose select and it will put that one on. If it doesn't find it, it keeps giving you this blue line. But you can choose data type and convert to text if you need to. So back to the stock stuff. This will give you the current one. And if you want the source, then it tells you it's powered by Refinitiv, where it's traded on. And it does update. This shows you it's a linked data type. It does update, but you do need to click the refresh all button in the data tab. So more recently, you have this new function called stock history, just been released. So stock history takes the stock, start date, end date, and some intervals. So if I say equal stock history, I can refer to this, press a comma, start date needs to be in speech marks. I'm gonna do 5th of Jan, 2021. And then the others are all optional, so I can leave them blank. Let's see what that gives. So enter will give me this date column and it even gives you the formatted one with the dollar sign there for the close. Now I can go even further. For example, let's say I want everything from that until today. In end date, I can write today. And then it will give me everything there. Control down will mean that it returns until the 2nd of March. And if I see what the current date is, it's the 4th of March in Cambodia time, which means that it hasn't yet got results for yesterday's time in the US, which is the 3rd of March, and that's why it's not returning it yet. But it will keep up to date because today is dynamic. So if I open this tomorrow, it will give me the results one day later. Other parameters that you can do, um, you can say daily, weekly, or monthly. So if I say number one for weekly, or I can double click, close my brackets, and it will do them once a week. Uh, if I keep going, then I can choose what to do with the headers. So no header does this, but it still returns the date. Um, I'm going to show you later how to just get the price, which is what I do in my examples. And then comma, I can choose what I want, what properties I want, and put them in the order that I want to specify them. So the default is it starts with date and then close, so zero and then one. But I can choose, for example, Zero is probably what you want to start with, but then you could have number five for trading volume, then number four for low, then number three for high, then number one for close, and you can keep going. It ironically keeps going properties until 10, but there are only six for now, although there might be more added later on. Google Finance, for example, has more things like 52-week high or low, earnings per share, etc. A lot of the things that you would get in here. You can't yet get in stock history, but maybe that's coming given that they allow you to do more properties. So busy means that it's busy fetching it. Sometimes you need to double click to get that. Notice it doesn't have the headers. It's not as useful. But over here, I can choose number one or even number two will give me the stock price, the stock ticker as well. So um, that's all well and good for uh, stocks and you can here write it yourself as well you can write aapl 
Notice that if you don't write, type the right date, like 1st of January, it will start before that. But if you just write 1st of January and then close your brackets, and that is not a date that's specified because it's a holiday, it might give you an error like this. So if that's the case, then try another date. <laughs> not that informative, unfortunately, but that is what I've discovered using this. So if you want the exchange rate, you need to type it as USD EUR like this. The three letters representing the currency right next to each other and it will give you that. Volume is NA when you are looking at currency pairs. Um, it's good to type them in first and then convert it to a stock and just see if it works like that. By the way, currency is in the insider version. Essentially, it is pretty much the same as stocks. Stocks can also do that. So they've just kind of reworded it to give you more of an idea. And the card looks a little bit different for currency pairs compared to stocks. It has less information. Uh, it doesn't have, for example, employees or trading information for shares and things like that. So there we have um, the information here. If you want it just in one cell with just the close price, which is fairly common, for example, to get something that looks like this, then what you do is you write the formula a little bit. So let's just say in brackets, uh, 5th of Jan 2021, and then end date leave blank, interval leave blank, and headers we're gonna do zero. And then in properties, we're just gonna do one, close brackets. And then it just gives it to us in one cell, which is what we kind of need for the example that I showed you earlier. I also make this one into data validation where you can choose from those. And here I've also forced it to be a stock type, but it is dynamic. So I can change this to, for example, Microsoft. And the good thing about that is you don't need to know exactly the ticker information. You can just press, for example, Microsoft and it will convert it for you like that. And stock history will read that quite well. I've added these, these three are formulas. So this is just saying, if it's blank, then return blank. If it's the same, then return an equal symbol, which I don't think we see because it's very rare. <laughs> and if it goes up, then return up. If it goes down, then return down. This is the change column that just again, compares this with the previous day. And this is the year column that compares the year, the month from this, the month from this, and then it will return either that year or the year plus one if it is going into it. And this is just a pivot table that I've built. So to do that, select it, go to insert pivot table. I'm gonna choose an existing worksheet here. And then I'm going to write year. And then in year, I want to in exclude the blank one. And then I'm going to say the close and close a second time. And then not a sum, I wanna right click and choose summarize by average. Same here, summarize by average. But the second one I'm going to do show values as percent difference from in year, I'm gonna choose previous like that. So if you like this video, then as I said before, you can give me a like button. And if you want a copy of that Excel file or the Google Sheets file, which I still think Google Finance is better, then you can just write a comment down below and also subscribe to my channel and I can get those files to you. Um, I do a lot of videos on Excel, Google Sheets, Power BI, PowerPoint, Zoom, Teams, loads of other applications that you might use at your daily workplace. So subscribe if you want more awesome content. Thanks for watching.